Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today, I have an exciting video about the Onefinity CNC machine. So I've been spending a lot of time bringing my machine through its paces, learning its idiosyncrasies, and then really just trying to dive deep into the differences of the Onefinity versus my previous X-Carve, and then before that, the Shape Oko. So one of the things that is unique about the Onefinity is it does its homing process without using micro switches or inductive switches. What it uses instead is the stall current of the motors. So it senses when the machine has actually bumped up against something and it is no longer moving because the current of the motors has, has gone up. So that is very interesting and it is unique to what all the machines that I've seen on the market so far. So after using the machine a couple times, I started wondering, well, how accurate is this stall sensing mechanism for the machine and how repeatable is it if you were going to make a cut, turn the machine off, rehome the machine, will it return to the exact position that you set it to whenever you zeroed it for your operation? And so I've actually done a number of projects already where I've had to do this. In one case, I just left the machine on overnight so that I would guarantee the machine was going to be in the exact location that I wanted to. And then in the next case, I actually turned the machine off to see how close I could get to the original dimensions on the next day during the next set of operations. And at least for that second use case, I got pretty close. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't exactly what I was looking for. And so that is what caused me to start investigating the repeatability of the homing operations. And so I have run a ton of experiments on the machine to try and figure out how repeatable homing is and what the nuances and the variables are on the homing process. So today I'm gonna to walk you through the setup that I used to do the homing experiments and then walk you through the results that I found, which are pretty interesting. So based on all of the experimentation that I have done, I am gonna make some recommendations on the optimal way to home your machine for reliable operations if you are doing multiple operations spread across multiple days. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and walk through the setup of how I tested both the X and the Y repeatability for homing. I did not test Z under the assumption that Z follows the same reliability of the X and Y operations. If for some reason someone wants me to test Z or if there's some question about the reliability of it, please leave your comments down below and I will dig into that and uh, do a future video. All right, so let's go ahead and cut over to the machine. I'll show you the setup and then we'll come back. We'll jump onto the computer. I will show you the results that I got through the process and then we'll wrap it up. The setup that I use to test the repeatability and the reliability of the homing process is that I have a dial indicator here that is touching one of the arms on the Onefinity CNC. And then I've locked the dial indicator down using some clamps to my wasteboard. I have backed the machine off 100 millimeters from its home position and then I will select home. The machine will move and home itself and then I will return it 100 millimeters and then see how close the machine is to that position after homing. And so the differences between its starting location and its ending location will tell me how accurate it is from set to set. I repeated the entire experiment from the Y axis as well by using the back plate of the Z gantry here as the stopping point. So this is a quick little video showing the machine moving 100 millimeters off to the left and then uh, coming back 100 millimeters, returning to the exact position from which it's left. So this showed me the repeatability and the reliability of the machine, not with the homing cycle, but just moving left and right 100 millimeters. And it clearly returns to the exact same position. This is the first of the homing tests where I command the machine to home from 100 millimeters out and then I wait for it to go through the homing process. Then I ask the machine to return 100 millimeters, which you can see here that it came up just a little bit short at about 0.9 thou. 
I moved the machine again 100 millimeters and return it just to make sure that there wasn't a fluke. You can see it returns essentially to the exact same position. All right, so here we are over on the computer and what you see in front of you are all of the results that I got during my testing and experimentation. So the results are fairly interesting and I was a little surprised by them. Let me describe what is on the screen here. So I did about four sets of tests. I tested X axis in two different ways and I tested the Y axis in two different ways. First, I tested the X axis homing from about 100 millimeters away and then I tested the X axis homing from essentially the home position. Now, when the Onefinity does a home process, what it does is it moves the machine to its stall location and then it backs off a few millimeters. So where it ends up as the quote unquote home location is actually not quite the stall location. It is a few millimeters away. So what I chose to do is actually see how reliable it was from far away, 100 millimeters, and then close up, zero millimeters. And I did the same thing for the Y axis. So as you can see here, the results are relatively consistent, and I'll talk about what that means in a minute. And what you can see is I'm getting both positive and negative results, which what that means is, what I saw is the machine returns to home or computes home, both on the plus side and the minus side from the previous position. And so let me quickly run through the numbers on the x-axis, right? From the 100 millimeters away, so what I did is I would home the machine and then I would jog it 100 millimeters away from the honing position and then initiate a homing operation. So what you can see here is at least one time I got zero, which means the machine returned spot on to the exact position that I left it. And then on average, roughly about a thousandth or two thousandths of an inch each time difference from the previous value. A couple times it was lower, a couple times it was larger. So over here you can see the actual average across all of those values, including the positive and negative values, was 0 0.0002 inches, which is two millionths of an inch. <laughs> um, that is a tenth of a mil or two tenths of a mil. So take out the positive and the negatives. I did the average of the absolute value and it came up to 1.3 thousandths of an inch. So uh, 0.00138 was the actual average. And so what that's saying is the homing process from 100 millimeters away was on average accurate down to a thousandths of an inch. So that's pretty interesting. <laughs> I would say that's fairly accurate. It's not spot on. It's maybe not accurate for some things, but I think for most of the things that we're doing, that's pretty good. So then I tried it from zero millimeters away or from essentially the home position, and I got some even more interesting results. You can see here that the numbers are actually a fair bit smaller by almost an order of magnitude on average. So what we're seeing here is the average is negative 0.0004 uh, when you home from the zero position and in the absolute value of that is 0.0015, which is interestingly enough just a slightly above the 100 millimeter testing position. So what that's telling me is homing from the home position produces a essentially a constant variability of positive and negative back and forth so that the average over time is a very close to zero. Um, but the absolute value is essentially the same repeatability that you get from 100 millimeters away. And I'll talk about my interpretation of that in just one moment after I go through the y-axis. So when we get to the y-axis, what you see is, again, more interesting results. The numbers are similar from the 100 millimeter position uh, to the X, except they're lower on average. And then they essentially alternate positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative throughout the tests. There's a couple, a little bit of variability there, but essentially uh, when it homes uh, positive to a certain distance, then next time it homes, it homes negative to that distance, which essentially gives you a little variability, um, but it's constantly bouncing between two limits. And so because of that, the average with the positive and negatives in put in um, is 0 0.00002 
too. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think that's a hundred millionth of an inch or something close to that on average. Uh, when you take out the positive and negatives, uh, you essentially end up with one, one thou. And so from the zero position, I got very similar results. It oscillated between positive and negative almost consistently. Uh, and the average here was a little bit higher uh, for the uh, zero position, but it was lower than the x position and then is so at 0 0.0007 uh, which is very close to the x position except x was negative and y is positive and then on the y side you uh, when i take out the uh, negatives and just make the absolute value you essentially get the same value which is a thousandth of an inch uh, or uh, 1.7 thou uh, so what we're seeing is very consistent results x and y uh, you know, between 1.3 and 1.7 thou on average uh, of repeatability. And so I was curious in, you know, what the variance was value to value. So I did compute the standard deviation on both the absolute and the non-absolute values. And essentially what you're seeing is about a thou variance uh, value to value uh, for the X value here. So you have uh, 1.6 thou and then two thou here for the uh, zero value and then uh, just under a thou at 0 0.08 thou, and then uh, roughly at two thou. So these are very similar results uh, for the x-axis. And then on the y-axis, interestingly enough, it was a little bit higher at 3.8 thou um, and 4.1 thou on the variability for the standard deviation, which I thought was interesting because overall the numbers are lower here. Um, and then the absolute value um, is 1.9 thou and 2.2 thou. Now, I'll be quite honest with you. I'm not a statistician. I'm not a mathematician. I don't know if the absolute value is the correct value or the non-absolute value is the correct value when it comes to these uh, standard deviations. Uh, I would think that uh, the non-absolute value would be the correct value because you're just taking the numbers and you're taking the standard deviation where the plus and the minuses actually matter in this case. So... Um, <clears throat> Regardless of all of that, regardless of the math, what you're seeing is pretty consistent results. Uh, and the flip-flopping of the positive and negative is interesting uh, to me because that's basically saying the machine is, is you know, overcompensating, undercompensating, overcompensating, undercompensating almost um, in a rhythmic pattern. Um, and then the generally smaller results for homing from zero are also interesting to me. So my takeaway from all of this is home the machine from whatever location you want to home it from and then home it again from the zero location and you're likely to get much better dialed in results because um, you're going to get very very close with the first homing operation and then the consistency in the homing from zero seems to be just a little bit better overall i don't know that you need to home twice because these numbers are fairly compelling. I was a little surprised, um, you know, when I was jotting them down in the notebook here, I was like, wow, those are really big numbers, like three, you know, 0 0.0035. And then it occurred to me that's three thousandths of an inch uh, was one of the largest values I got. And so uh, I don't know that anything that I do with woodworking really comes down to three thousandths of an inch. Uh, you're really not gonna be able to tell the difference. If you're doing a lot of work with metal or you're doing some precision work, certainly three thousandths is probably going to be a big deal. If you're doing a lot of tapping, maybe that might be a big deal as well. Although I don't know anyone who's tapping with their CNC, but I'm sure someone is out there. So uh, just something to consider there that um, it seems highly repeatable. It seems highly reliable. Uh, there's a little bit of variance there that you need, might need to take into account. Now, the other takeaway from all of this is, is whether it's positive or negative and what the value is, is completely unpredictable. <laughs> there is no pattern to it. So you can't say, I'm gonna home this way and then expect a certain variance. I saw no repeating patterns other than perhaps close to a, a positive negative back and forth uh, variability in some of the values, but it was, you know, 0 0.09 on one, and then it was, you know, 0 0.035 on another, and then 0 0.0007 on another, right? Uh, so no way to really predict how accurate it is. I 
do want to rerun these results with the new homing procedure for the new version of the software once I get my hands on it. So that'll be interesting to see how that pans out. But again, very interesting results. And I think that this is uh, something very compelling. It shows that the re repeatability and reliability of the machine is pretty spot on. I've previously done some analysis on how uh, repeatable the machine is in terms of backlash. You know, uh, does it return to the position that you took it, sent it from? across the, the the various distances across the machine from uh, a few inches away to half the distance to the full distance of the machine and i got uh, highly consistent results there as well usually usually pretty spot on to the point where my my dial indicator was not returning results that i could actually distinguish so it was below you know hundred thousandths of an inch or so on my dial indicator now i'm sure if i had a, a more expensive one or a more fancy one that can read down to the tens of a thousands then maybe i would be able to discern some results that were a little bit better but very impressed with the, the repeatability of the machine in that regard all right, well, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to make. It was really hard to make. A lot of bending, a lot of stooping, a lot of squinting, <laughs> a lot of trial and experimentation, but I think it worked out in the end. I got some really compelling results and some really interesting results. I was a little surprised by the results. And even though on the surface of looking at the data itself, I thought it was a little curious, you know, just kind of stepping back and putting it in a perspective, it's kind of sort of not that bad. It is probably a lot better than what I was getting from my previous machine. Uh, you know, if I had the opportunity and the time, maybe it would be interesting to do re reproduce that experiment with the x carve just to see how, uh, how close the results were. But I don't have that opportunity, so we're going to have to save that for a different point in the future. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway, but leave your comments down below and tell me why so we can make future videos better. If you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so. Ringing that bell, very important these days. I make videos like this all the time, and if you enjoy it, I would appreciate that subscription. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. All right, thank you so much for getting this far, and thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to be inspired. And so one of the things that is unique about the Onefinity is it uses a, <clears throat> what the hell is it called? I don't know what it's called. It's not touchless. Um, I don't know. All right, we'll make it up. <clears throat> first, let me first, <clears throat> first, let me first. <laughs> no.